Do you by any chance have a tangent line equation problem that's maybe the weirdest one you've ever seen? <laughs> Probably not, but I do actually. Somebody recently asked me a question as a comment on one of my videos that has to do with finding the tangent line of a specific function. And it was a pretty weird one, maybe the weirdest one I've ever seen. So I wanted to show you that in case you came across a similar problem. And let that be a lesson to you too. If you've got questions that you have about calculus, feel free to drop them on, as a comment on one of my videos and maybe I'll make a video about it one day. But anyway, let's joke, go ahead and just jump right into this problem. So here's the problem we're going to be going over today. And I know that it doesn't look like a weird problem, but bear with me for just a second and I'll explain exactly why this is such a weird uh, tangent line equation problem. So what we're going to do is determine the equations of two lines that pass through the point negative 1, negative 3, and are tangent to the graph of y equals x squared plus 1. So let me show why this is such a weird problem by graphing this function and this point. So first of all, we have this y equals x squared plus one. That is just gonna be a parabola with its vertex at the point zero, one. So it'll look something like that. And then this point here, negative one, negative three, is gonna be somewhere down here, right? So this is the reason why this is such a weird problem is because the point that they gave us that we know that this tangent line has to pass through, it doesn't even lie on the function that they gave us. Normally with these problems, they give you a point that lies on the function, but that's gonna end up being a completely different process due to the fact that it doesn't lie on the function. And not only that, that's exactly why there's two different lines that this problem wants us to find, right? We can have some sort of tangent line that comes up here like that and is tangent to this function up here. And then we can have another one that kind of goes, you know, somewhere over here and is tangent to it right here. So, what we kind of have to do is figure out where these two points are that are actually on our function, and then we can use those points to kind of go through the typical process that a tangent line equation problem would look like. So how do we do that? Well, it's going to be a similar process to what we would have to do if we were given a point that's actually on the function. What you want to keep in mind is what we're trying to find is a tangent line, which means our answer should be the equation of a line. So let's go ahead and just start with the generic equation of a line. y equals m times m x minus x zero plus y zero. So in this kind of generic form of a line, m is our slope, and then x zero, y zero is some point that lies on this line. So in order for this line to be a tangent line to the function that we have, it needs to share two things in common with the function itself. It needs to go through uh, the same point, it needs to share a point, and at that specific point, it needs to have the same slope as our function. So what we have to do is basically come up with some sort of generic version that represents each of these two points, and not only that, we have to figure out the slope of our function x squared plus one at those two points. So to do that, what we wanna do is kind of think of some generic point that lies on this function. So what I mean by that is, let's just say that this point that we're gonna look at, the x coordinate is just some unknown constant a. You can pretty much call it whatever you want, but it does need to be some sort of unknown constant. In this case, like I said, we'll use a. So what would be the y coordinate of a point that lies on this function with the x coordinate being a? Well, to figure that out, we could just plug a into our function and whatever output we get would be the y coordinate. So if we plug a in here for x, we're gonna get a squared plus one. So that would be the y coordinate of this point that we know this point a, a squared plus one lies on the function no matter what a we plug in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a and a squared plus one as our x zero, y zero, some point that lies on there. So what we also need to do is figure out the slope at this point a and a squared plus one. Well, to figure out the slope, slope should always make you think derivative. To figure out the slope of this function at some specific x value, what we need to do is find its derivative. Well, the derivative of this function, the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus one can be found just using the power rule. We can bring the power down in front and lower the power by one, giving us two x, and then the derivative of one is just zero. So the equation that tells us the slope of this function at any given point, no matter what x value we plug in, would just be two times that x value. So if we wanna find the slope of our function when x equals a, 
we would just plug in a into our derivative. So that would just tell us the slope of our function at the x coordinate of a would just be 2a. So what we've just figured out now is the slope of our function at this point and the x coordinate and the y coordinate at these points. So if we plug these three pieces now into this generic form for the, the equation of this tangent line we have, that'll give us some kind of generic tangent line equation. We'll have to figure out what a should actually be in order for this to work, but at least we have kind of a template to use. So again, our slope is gonna be m, so that's 2a. x is our variable, that's gonna stay as x. x0 is the x coordinate that we have, which is a, and then plus y0, which is the y coordinate we have, which is a squared plus one. So we know that each of these tangent line equations need to follow this kind of general format. What we can do at this point is simplify, which should make things a little bit easier going forward. Combining our like terms here, negative two a squared plus a squared will give us a negative a squared. Then we have a two 2xa, I'll go ahead and write it in that form, because what we want to do now is think of this as a function of a. What we want to do is solve for a. Well, since we have an a squared term, an a term, and then a constant term, what we can do is treat this as a quadratic, thinking of a as our variable, just for a second. Obviously, x is the variable of this tangent line equation function that we're looking for. But just for a second, we'll solve this for a by thinking of a as a variable, and what we have is a quadratic. So first of all, what we can do is complete the square. So to complete the square, what we wanna do is kind of rewrite this equation where we're gonna have an a squared term, our a term again, and then we want to put in another new, new uh, term here so that we can rewrite this as a plus or minus something all squared. So that's kind of our goal with completing the square. Well, to do that, all we really have to do is take the coefficient of our a term here, divide it by two and then square it. So the coefficient is two x. If we take two x divided by two, that's x, and then x squared would be the final term. However, what we need to be careful about here is we had a negative a squared. So in order to make sure that this is equivalent to what we had up here, we need to keep our negative here. So what that means is if we kind of imagine distributing this negative in here to go back to that last step, putting the negative on the a squared will work. But then when we put the negative here, it's actually going to make it negative. So what we need to do to cancel that out is make this a negative 2xa. And therefore, if we take our coefficient of negative 2x, divide that by 2, and then square it, well, since we're squaring it, we're still gonna end up with a plus x squared. So then what we need to do to make sure that this step is equivalent to this step is we just artificially put in a negative x squared, right? Because if we distribute this negative, we're gonna get negative x squared. So what we have to do to cancel that out is then add an x squared outside of our parentheses. And then we're still gonna have our plus one. So if you were to distribute this negative, combine our like terms and simplify this, we would end up with exactly what we had back here. But the reason why this is pretty cool is what we can do now is we can rewrite a squared minus 2xa plus x squared as a minus x all squared. This is gonna foil out into this. So as a result, these two things should be equivalent. And the reason why this is so great is because now, looking at this equation, we only have one a. So what we can do is basically move everything else over to the other side of the equation and get a all by itself. So first of all, if we subtract x squared and subtract one over to the other side, we'll get negative a minus x all squared equals y minus x squared minus one. Then we can multiply both sides by negative one, which would just make everything negative of what it was before. And then we can take the positive and negative square root of both sides, which cancels out the squared and the square root over here. And then we can just add the x over to the other side. So that gives us a equals x plus or minus the square root of negative y plus x squared plus one. 
Now what we want to keep in mind is the other important piece of information that the problem gave us, which is we need this, so this equation here kind of rep represents our tangent line equation. So this represents some line for some unknown a value, which we know is going to be tangent to our function, and it's going to go through the specific points here and here. But the other important piece of information they gave us about this tangent line is it also has to go through the point negative 1, negative 3. So in order to figure out what a value is going to make this work, we need to plug in negative 1 for x and negative 3 for y into this equation. So if we do that, putting negative 1 in for x, we're going to get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of putting negative 3 in for y and negative 1 in for x is going to give us 3 plus 1 plus 1, which is 5. So a can be either negative 1 plus the square root of 5 or negative 1 minus the square root of 5. That's where the two different tangent line equations come from. If a is negative 1 plus root 5, it gives us one of these two lines. And if it's negative 1 minus root 5, we get the other one. So what we need to do now is take these two a values that we figured out and plug them back into our tangent line equation that we had up here. This is probably the best one to use because it's the most simplified version. So if we do that, plugging our a down here into this equation up here, we're going to get y equals negative, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared plus 2x negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 plus 1. And it probably would be best to kind of treat these as two separate cases. So do with uh, this being a positive sign and a positive sign, and then do it again with them each being negative signs. But if you do that, and then you expand this all out and simplify, which I'm gonna leave to you, you would end up with y equals plus or minus two root five times x plus one minus two x minus five. And this is gonna be the equation of the tangent line to that function that goes through each of those two points and also through the point negative one, negative three. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well. I've got some other implicit differentiation problems coming out soon. They're gonna be a bit more normal kinds of problems that you're very likely to run into in a calculus course. And if you wanna learn some more about implicit differentiation, go ahead and click on one of those videos over there. Thanks and see you next time.